This was the best era in Dr. Stone's art. Now, don't get me wrong, Dr. Stone has always looked gorgeous. I mean, come on, it's Boichi. But you have to admit that there has been a sort of trend in Boichi's art style throughout the course of the series. Not to say it got any better or worse, it's just a clear shift from one style to another. But roughly in the middle of the shift is what I conveniently like to call the messy brush era. The era in Dr. Stone where Boichi just said screw it and really went crazy with those brush strokes. And in this video, I'd like to discuss why this was a truly unique time in the history of Dr. Stone. Be warned that this will contain spoilers. Before I get started, make sure to comment with your thoughts. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week in the next video. This week's comment goes to Natalie Rocks, which I probably just butchered, for giving credit to the voice actors of Dr. Stone. If you'd like more Dr. Stone and other manga discussions like this one, then make sure to subscribe and follow along with each week's video. So as you can probably tell, this is easily my most obscure video on Dr. Stone. Like this is such a minute detail in the 200 plus chapters of Dr. Stone and it's pretty easy to forget about. But anyone who was weekly when these chapters were coming out was truly living in a special time. Kind of like your favorite video game before they patch it and ruin it. Not that moving away from this ruined Dr. Stone, that's not what I'm saying at all. This small detail just marks a particular era of the Dr. Stone series, even if it was very short-lived. But to understand why it was so special, first let me quickly address how Boichi's art style has shifted from the beginning of Dr. Stone. In the beginning, Dr. Stone looked a lot more like traditional manga. Not flat in the sense of being boring, but flat in the sense that most of the time the characters actually looked two-dimensional. Which is fine, because it's manga, it's cartoons, we like it looking like cartoons. But then on top of that, you could tell that Boichi was still using a style that was fairly similar to his previous works like Sun Ken Rock, especially in that first chapter. If you just look at Senku in chapter one, right away you're like, holy crap, that's not my Senku. Because clearly Boichi has made a lot of subtle changes to his art style over the course of the story. And I say subtle because most fans would probably be like, come on man, he hasn't changed that much. But when you look back, you're like, oh my God, this guy was right. I mean, of course I'm right, because h have you met me? I'm me. But seriously, go do that because it's wild. When you compare the volume one chapters to the recent chapters, those subtle differences start to become a lot more obvious. Probably the most obvious being the shift in lining. Lining in early Dr. Stone is very thin, but now it's different. It's not so much thicker as it is just more solid. And this can probably be explained by Boichi's shift from traditionally drawing manga to drawing it almost if not completely digitally. To be fair, I'm not an art expert, so that's just my explanation. But this particular shift in lining more or less coincides with the timeline for when Boichi made the full switch to digital following COVID and he had to be remote. So that would explain things. On top of all that, there's also other subtle details like the eyes tending to be smaller and the characters typically looking more 3D like you can also see from Horikoshi in the newer MHA chapters. And I'm sure there's even more that I'm missing, which kind of gets to my point. Besides the more general shifts like traditional to digital and 2D to 3D, Boichi has played around with a lot of different artistic choices. Some he's kept and others for whatever reason he just decided not to keep. One of these was the messy brush. And this one stands out among the rest because it kind of marks the end point for Boichi's more traditional art style in Dr. Stone. To be clear, this wasn't something that came out of nowhere. This was something that Boichi would occasionally use as one of his tools to help create a certain effect. For example, you can kind of see it here in chapter two when Senku and Taiju revive the swallow. It's not as clear, but you can still see how Boichi drew the stone fragments in a messy brush type style that helps to give the fragments that dynamic look to them. He would also occasionally use it for word bubbles when he would want to create a very dramatic atmosphere. In fact, he still uses this in the current story, especially for the Y-Man scenes, but it's not quite what we're talking about. See, if you look at a few of Gen's transformations as Lillian, then the messy brush stroke becomes a lot easier to pick out. The lining looks like Boichi just took the brush and quickly sort of swiped it, helping to create the seamless blend between Gen and Lillian. So as you can see, this is something Boichi was playing around with for a while. Luckily, the anime took care to emulate the specific style as it's something that creates a very deliberate impression. But it reached its peak when we get to the later half of Treasure Island. 
And this is where we start to see why this is such an obscure video. Because you would think Boichi would really want to go to town with this, right? I mean, it's cool, it looks cool, why not just use it whenever? Well, for whatever reason, Boichi made this exclusive to Mozu and Matsukaze. Although he did technically do it for Ibarra this one time, but that's not as obvious. The first time Boichi really truly used what I refer to as the messy brush or the ink brush is in chapter 121. Here, it could not be more in your face. The way he draws Mozu's hair and shoulder pads, it just gives him such an intense aura. And the fact that he looks like this painting kinda helps to build up the impression that he's an otherworldly creature in terms of just how stupid strong he is. But of course, the most iconic example of Boichi doing the messy brush is in Matsukaze's flashback. I mean, come on man, Boichi went off for absolutely no reason. You can just feel the bloodshed and it's just raw. That's really what it all adds up to. The way he draws the character when he does this just makes them look raw and intense and it's awesome. And for absolutely no reason. Literally no other reason just to make these guys look cool. It doesn't even tie into any of the themes of the story. It doesn't have anything to do with science. It just looks cool. Which is why this is a special point in time for Dr. Stone. Again, it's not that the art gets worse after this. Not at all. This is just a very particular point in Dr. Stone over the span of 25-ish chapters where Boichi was just like, you know what, I'ma use the messy brush. And it's not even like he suddenly came up with the idea. You can see that this was something Boichi was already well acquainted with in Sun Ken Rock. Just for whatever reason, he decided that he wanted to do it and boom, he did it. And to me, that's peak creativity. Because creativity is really just, hey, I have this cool idea, let me try it out. And that's exactly what he did, and it worked wonders. But like I said, after this, we really don't see the messy brush like this anymore. To the best of my knowledge, it's really just sorta kinda used for the Y-Man stuff, but again, not really what we're talking about. Which is another reason why this is such a special point in Dr. Stone's history. All those subtle differences I mentioned earlier, like lining and 2D versus 3D, well, it's pretty much right after Boichi stops using the messy brush, and when we're entering North America, that he officially starts to use the newer art style. So, in a sense, the messy brush era is kind of the marker for the last of Boichi's more traditional choices. Which isn't to say he doesn't stop using things he did before, or that he doesn't continue to try out new things. Like, whatever the heck Kohaku is doing here. It just serves as a sort of divider between all those subtle shifts in his art style. But unfortunately, that's really all I have to say about it. Like I said, very obscure topic, but it's something I really wanted to bring to people's attention. Because like I said a billion times in this video, Boichi's art style hasn't gotten better or worse, it's just changed. And while I'm sure everyone has their favorite point in this shift, mine is currently the messy brush era. It serves as the halfway marker between the old and the new, and it still stands out from even the best panels in Dr. Stone. And that's it for this discussion. If you enjoyed this discussion, then make sure to like the video. Don't forget to comment with your thoughts down below. And if you'd like more Dr. Stone and other manga discussions like this one, then make sure to subscribe and follow along with each week's video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.